Hey guys, Christy here from Crafty Christy's Creations, and today we are going to look at a feature that is part of the business edition in Silhouette Studio, and this is the font creator. So if you come over here on to the right side, um, just under your font text panel is just this little cursive A with a little marker. So we'll go ahead and press that. And then the next thing you want to do is hit the show font creator sheet. So you'll get that pulled up. And this is pretty simple on the way a font creation goes. So we'll just wait for this to load here. And then what this sheet is, you'll print this up on your printer and then you'll fill in each letter with what you want it to be. So let's zoom in here. So you can see right here it says um, create your own, own handwritten font and then you're just going to fill in with a black pen. Um, obviously, you know, depending on if you use a Sharpie or just a regular ballpoint pen, you can get thicker or thinner fonts as well. And then it's got some nice little lines here to help you keep everything proportional. Um, when you're creating fonts, you do want to think about making sure that the base of each letter is at the same place. Um, so that's what these lines are here to kind of help be indicators for you. And then you can also see here that it's got registration marks around the edges. So that way what you're going to do when you're done, once you've printed it and filled it out, you can go ahead and scan that in. We'll pull this piece back up here. Okay, and then when you're done, you're going to fill in the template and then you can either scan it or take a photo, um, pretty similar to how you would do the pick scan map. And then once you get it back in here, we'll show you the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and print this up, get it filled out, and we'll go from there. All right, so I've got my page all printed out here. And you can see I went rogue. I didn't have a good black marker available, so I used this purpley blue one. We'll see if it reads. So other problems I had is my printer is not really been working well with Silhouette Studio. So I ended up saving my file as a JPEG, which is another bonus feature of having business edition. I'm able to export things to different properties. So I went ahead and saved this screen as a JPEG and was able to print the JPEG it is a little bit smaller size than what it's showing on the screen, but it seems to work okay. We'll see. All right, so what I did after that, I took a photo of my piece of paper, emailed that to myself, and downloaded it to my computer. A lot of the same similar steps as you would use if you're using the PicScan mat, so I will leave a link below in the description on how to um, do the pick scan mat to kind of give you a refresher on some of those steps of emailing and um, downloading photos and things like that. All right, so now that I've got that all done, let's go over here to photo and import photo, navigating to where it's at, and I'm going to open that. All right, and it says no calibration profile. I'm not overly worried about that, so I'm gonna continue without calibration. Since I'm not cutting anything, I'm not overly concerned about it being calibrated. Now, if this was um, pick scan mat, that would be a different story. All right, so we're gonna let this load, and this does usually take a minute or two as it loads in each uh, letter separately. Okay, so it is starting to load in the letters and you can see um, everything over here that's loading. So it comes up named um, the image that I saved. So the first thing we can do is click on here and we can change that name and you can um, name it whatever you want. You can see I've already done this a few times. So I'm just going to make this a third one. <laughs> okay, and then that will save it. 
All right. And then when you look at these letters, you notice there's a bar next to them. And that is just because I ended up having to print this as a JPEG. So when you print this screen here, you notice a lot of this is kind of light and just the grid lines are kind of dark. And I think um, it has something to do with the fact I did it as a JPEG. It really picked up on those lines and added them to each letter. So we're going to go ahead and start editing our glyph. So I'm going to tap on the first one, which is A, and then I'm going to hit Edit Glyph. And then that's going to pop it up here. And then you can see it's showing us our height lines here, which were um, some of these were also on our piece of paper. So now what I can do is I'm going to double tap. And what that does is brings up our point editing. And I am just, let's see if we can just move the point editing screen over here. Okay, and now um, I'm just going to click on this first tab here and I'm going to hit delete, delete, and I'm just going to keep hitting delete. And that got rid of that piece. And then when you come in here, let's click off again. You see it's pretty jagged in here. So I'm going to double tap to bring up my point editing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hold down the shift key and touch multiples of these anchor points at the same time. And then if I come over to smooth, it's going to smooth all of that out at once. So now if I click off, you can see that looks a lot nicer. So you can do it that way and things will be a little bit faster. But, um, you know, you could spend a lot of time cleaning up all these letters. But once you're done, you want to hit Save Glyph. And then um, it might take a minute because I think it's probably still uploading. But you should see there. So it's Save the Glyph and it's you can see the changes here in the little piece. So then you could go ahead and go to the next one and hit Edit, make your changes and do the same thing. And then um, at the bottom here, you've got a couple different save options. So you can do it as a test run. And what that's going to do is it's just going to keep your font in Silhouette Studio until you turn off the application or close it out. And then um, your other option here, you have save final version and install. And then you'll notice it's going to install as a TTF file. And from there, what you're actually, you can use the same font inside other programs like Microsoft Word. And then your last option here is save final version without installing. So what that means is it's going to save your font to your computer, but it's not actually going to install it into any of the programs. So um, those are your different versions here. And I'm just going to save as a test run for right now. There, so it says right here it's been um, it's successfully saved. So I can just hit OK. And then I just want to show you here too, you've got some settings here. You can adjust your character spacing and your line spacing as well. And now if I go ahead and open up a new page, and then I'm going to grab my text tool, and I'm going to say a new font. Let's just give this a color. And then if I change my font, and did you know that you can just type in the font here? Writing three. All right, and then it went ahead and filled in. So like I was saying, most of those letters tend to have this uh, line in there. And we can, I could go through and get rid of all those. But uh, you notice the A here has all of it fixed. So that doesn't have any part there. And then if I wanted to click on this, I still have all of the same um, things that I can do. I can adjust my line spacing. I can character spacing. That will scrunch everything up. So you can do that. Um, you know, you can kind of change some things here, how you want it to look. Uh, if you're doing multiple paragraphs, just like you can do with any other font. So those are good things to know. And then, um, so like I said, it's saved here. And then if you come over to your glyphs, 
these are all of your extra pieces here. If I wanted to put in my um, ampersand, that's here and all your other different pieces. So just like a normal font. And then if I wanted to go back and edit this some more, I can open up the font creation panel and then go back to my digital font creation and all of my fonts are sitting here and I can open up and grab a new letter um, and then I can edit glyph and then you'll see it pop me into this one here and then I could go about editing again. So that is how you can turn your handwriting into a font inside of Silhouette Studio. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, click like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future Silhouette Studio tutorials. Until next time, with love, Crafty Christy.